When it comes to electric cars, there is one word that you're going to hear quite a lot, and that's range. Now, range is actually quite a simple concept, but as with any new technology, you do need to get your head around things. So in this video, I'm going to explain exactly what range is and tell you how you can make the most of it. Now, first up, range is basically a measure which indicates how far you're going to be able to drive before you'll need to charge the battery on your car up. So the numbers that you'll see quoted on our reviews here and also on CarMaker's websites are simply saying how far a car could go if the battery is charged to 100% and then driven until it reaches zero. Now, these are independently assessed official figures but they are done in a lab under lab conditions. So what you get in the real world could well be, and is usually less. But they might also be more, particularly if you drive a lot in towns and it's a nice temperature, like it is today. But don't forget that these figures are here to give us a benchmark so we can compare apples with apples. A car like this Citroen EC4X has an official combined range of up to 260 miles. Now you'll often hear that referred to as the WLTP range. The car industry really loves an acronym and I can never remember exactly what that one stands for. So it's on the screen now, you know, in case it comes in handy for, I don't know, a pub quiz or something. You should be able to achieve that figure in some conditions but you shouldn't expect to be able to achieve that on every single journey, as the efficiency will depend on all sorts of factors. Now, as a result, consumption and range figures for electric cars do tend to be on the optimistic side. But on a nice warm day with no wind, flat road with no corners, and if you turn every electrical system off, then you just might match your car's official WLTP figure the drive with a heavy right foot on a freezing cold day along the motorway with the heater pumped up to toasty, well, you're going to find that your range is much lower. Now, if you see a lower figure, you might panic and think, oh, I need a bigger battery. But do think about that carefully. Having a long driving range is a real luxury. It means you'll be plugging in less and you'll get more miles by having that bigger battery. And that can be handy on longer journeys but you can also choose a more efficient car and make a few changes to the way you drive. And I've got more on that later. Bigger batteries are very expensive and they also add extra weight, which in turn makes your car less efficient. So that means that you really want to try and choose a car that has the smallest possible battery for your own needs. It's going to save you money with the upfront purchase cost, but it will also mean that you use less power as you won't be carrying around heavy battery weight that you don't really need to use. This Citroen EC4X, for example, has a 50 kilowatt hour battery. That seems like the Goldilocks porridge for most drivers, just big enough for most journeys without adding unnecessary weight. If you only do a couple of big trips every year for holiday, then don't forget you can stop at a rapid charger and top up. It's worth spending a bit of time plugged in every once in a while than having a big battery for just a few special occasions every year when you may do longer journeys. But there are plenty of ways you can stretch your range to go even further before you need to get to topping up. And it will save you money too. Come on, I'll show you. As you'll know, if you've already tried one, electric cars are wonderfully easy to drive. And you know, if you haven't, then do check out our Electric Explain video that tells you all about what they're like. But even with the simplicity that they offer, there are ways in which you can tweak your driving style to help you get the most from your battery. It's nothing too drastic. And it's actually great fun seeing how much energy you can save, especially as it's energy that is often just wasted. Like this Citroen EC4X, most electric cars offer different driving modes that can help you to maximise your range or give you a bit more power if you aren't quite as worried about being efficient. 
So these modes alter the way the car feels and also, importantly for electric, how the energy is managed. So the power and the throttle responses will change. Some of the in-car functions like air conditioning or heating might be limited. By reducing the power draw on the battery, eco modes can help you get a little further with very little compromise. Now, most electric cars allow you to adjust the level of regenerative braking or regen. So what's that all about? Well, this takes place when you take your foot off the accelerator or drive downhill. And when an electric car does this, the motor that turns the wheels turns into a generator and it puts that charge back into the battery. By selecting a higher level of regen, more charge can be recuperated by the motor. In Citroens like this, you simply press this little button down there to B mode and immediately I'm getting more energy when I lift off the accelerator. I can really feel it. Look, it does take a bit of getting used to at first, but it soon becomes second nature. Personally, it's something I really love about driving electric cars. And I also love the payback in terms of range efficiency because that can be significant. It's a simple equation. The faster you go, the more energy you drain from your battery. Drive at 70 miles per hour and you'll use much more power over a distance than you will at 60 miles per hour. That's because factors like wind resistance will make life much harder for your motor and your battery as the speed increases. Canny electric car drivers know that in most cases, taking to an A road or sticking to 60 miles per hour can often generate big range improvements. If you're using a route planning app, try selecting avoid motorways and you'll often find that the A road route is shorter and more direct. Yes, it may take a little longer to reach your destination, but you'll get there with more range showing than if you took the motorway. And you might even avoid having to stop for a charge. Give it a try sometime, see if it works for you. So let's talk about electric cars and cold weather. Now, unlike a petrol or diesel car, electric cars produce very little waste heat. So if you want a warm car, you have to take that energy from your battery. And that means that you will inevitably have less power to drive the car and your range will drop slightly. So it does make sense to save as much as possible. Now, heating up the air in the car's interior uses loads of energy. So it's actually far more efficient to keep yourself warm. But that doesn't mean you need these or this because you can do that very efficiently by using your car's heated seats or the heated steering wheel if you've got one. It might feel a little counterintuitive, but you'll reduce your energy consumption significantly if you knock even a couple of degrees off your cabin temperature. Well, I hope you won't find the concept of range so strange now, and you'll be up to speed with how to make the most out of every watt. And if you want to know more about making the switch to electric, be sure to check out our other Electric Explain videos, because together with Citroen, we're here to clear the air.